Hey everyone, Lucky from IPD here. We're out in IPD service shop today, and we thought we'd take a little bit of time to go over turbos and turbo ownership 101. As the vast majority of Volvo cars are turbocharged, we get a lot of questions around them. Exactly what do they do, the related parts, how do I upgrade it, what kind of things do I need to adjust as I boost the performance of my car. So today we're going to take some time, look at turbos, look at the related parts, and what we need to do with them as we increase that performance. So let's start at the beginning with exactly what does a turbocharger do. The turbocharger is mounted on the exhaust manifold of a turbocharged engine. And the exhaust, as it comes out of the combustion chamber, it's hot and it's still burning, it's expanding a little bit, and it presses up against the turbine wheel inside of this turbocharger. That turbine wheel then spins, which is also connected to the front compressor wheel. It also spins at the same rate. And as this one spins, it creates compressed air that comes out of this nozzle. So instead of having an engine that just simply draws the air in, we're actually, through a series of tubing, forcing it into the engine. The more air we force in, the more fuel we can match with that, the more explosive our combustion, the more power that we make to the crankshaft. Now with all that said, if we didn't allow the turbocharger to be controlled in some way, it would actually go on and create more and more and more boost until eventually it damaged the engine. So we have to have a way to control that boost, and that's what the wastegate does. The wastegate is just as it sounds, it's a little gate valve that opens and allows exhaust to come by the turbo straight out the exhaust pipe, as opposed to coming through and actually pressing on the turbine wheel. By doing this, we control the amount of spin the turbine wheel has, and we control, obviously, its connected compressor wheel, which creates that boost pressure. So this is how we control the boost. Now, the wastegate gets its pressure controlled via a BCS, called a boost control solenoid, or in the slightly later cars, called the TCV, the turbo control valve. The wastegate on a car is controlled via the BCS or the TCV, as we mentioned, and in earlier cars, like the 850, from about 94 through 97, they use a BCV, and it's very identifiable as it's got a round body, three ports right on the face. Later model cars, from about 98 all the way up to the latest of cars, use a TCV, or a turbo control valve, and it's square and the ports line up differently, so it's easy to tell one from the other. Now, they do effectively the same job, but they do it slightly differently. Uh, the BCS, one of the things you'll note on it is the port for the turbo is extremely tiny. It has a fixed orifice to it. And that's one of the reasons that the IPD HD TCV, our heavy duty turbo control valve, is not compatible with the earlier BCS style valves. And we are working on a solution for that, so keep an eye on the website. Now with our TCV connected to the turbo, we can get a sense of exactly how it works. Now it's a basic three port solenoid, and that's the same as whether we're talking about the earlier BCS style or IPD's heavy duty turbo control valve. The way that it works, the computer controls the TCV, and it will block pressure coming from the turbo and allow the wastegate to vent out to the vent tube. This will prevent turbo pressure from acting on the wastegate and allow the boost to rise. As the TCV is controlled by the computer and it gets closer to its boost target, it will allow the pressure from the turbo to then act on the wastegate, opening up the wastegate door and allowing the exhaust gas to bypass, reducing the boost level. So the computer is ultimately responsible for how we get our boost. In your TCV you're upgrading to the IPD unit, you'll note that the TCV is marked with different colors. The red line goes to the turbo compressor charge outlet, the blue line goes to the vent tube, that's between the MAF airflow sensor and the turbo inlet, and the yellow line is the wastegate. In this case though it's not marked, it's the only one that you won't know. Our TCV comes with all the lines marked, so you have the blue and red as well as the yellow, so you don't have any questions. One of the critical aspects for the boost pressure system is making sure that the wastegate is actuator set up correctly. This threaded rod is adjustable and it needs to be set correct so the computer knows where to start from. To set it, you want to do this with the turbo in the car. You can do it outside of the car, but you don't have to take it out. And you're going to use a pressure gauge and a pressure pump to pump the wastegate up and adjust it. To adjust the wastegate, start by taking off the wastegate clip. We're going to take off the factory wastegate line. We'll connect the tube from our pressure pump, and we're going to go ahead and pump this up to the factory specified range. In this case, on this car, we're going to do about four pounds. Okay. Now we want to take the wastegate rod off of the wastegate arm itself, and see how the wastegate arm can move freely. If this is set properly, this wastegate arm will go right on top of that without having any adjustment. But in this case, we actually are adjusted incorrectly. So with our lock nut loosened, we're going to take and adjust this arm back until it just slides over that rod at our four pound setting. 
tighten the lock down back. Go ahead and put our clip back in place. And our wastegate is now properly set at four pounds. One of the last pieces to a turbocharger is the blow-off valve or compressor bypass valve or diverter valve. Now while there's three different names for those, they all effectively do the same thing and that is that they vent off or release back pressure that's created from being in boost with your foot on the throttle and then suddenly closing the throttle. The turbine impellers are spinning at 80 to 100,000 RPM, they're moving along, suddenly we close the throttle and we create a blockage. So all this back pressure builds up and if we don't release that pressure it can sideload the bearings in the turbo and wear them out prematurely. So this is the function of a blow-off valve, a diverter valve, or a bypass valve. They all do the same thing. They protect the turbo from that excessive pressure spike. But they do it in slightly different ways. A blow-off valve, something like this guy, will actually blow the air off to the atmosphere. It's just gone, it's lost, and in some cases that works fine, in others it doesn't. For Volvo specifically, that engine management system is expecting that air to be redirected or diverted back into the intake stream. So a blow-off valve on these cars isn't that suitable. The compressor bypass valve on the Mitsubishi series turbos that are found on the majority of these cars is actually integral to the compressor housing. Internally, it's got a diaphragm, this spring, and then a follower. This is our IPD HD CBV. Uh, internally, if we look at the stock unit, we can see that it's just a diaphragm with a factory spring and a plastic follower. With the CBV cover off, we can see the two ports. This port is connected to the charge air outlet, and the other port is connected to the inlet. So as excessive boost pressure is created from closing the throttle suddenly, the diaphragm lifts from the vacuum that's applied on the back of the diaphragm through this nipple, and through the pressure that's developed inside of the boost charge tube, lifts the diaphragm and vents it right back to the intake. Engine management system then does not lose that compressed air that it expects to be there. It's routed back in the intake and reused rather than like a blow-off valve which just blows it straight off to the atmosphere. Now IPD's HD CBV allows you to run higher than stock boost pressure and still maintain a proper amount of boost pressure bleed off from what's called boost stack or that boost over pressurization. Symbol go. the kit as you see it, set it into your compressor housing and then bolt the compressor cover back onto the top of the turbo. You'd be advised if you're having boost troubles Earlier Motronic 4.3 and 4.4 cars, which are around from 94 to about 98, utilize a different way to sense boost. The computer extrapolates boost based on the mass airflow, flow rate, the RPM, and the throttle opening. With those three things, it can get pretty close to the actual boost target, and then controls the TCV to control the wastegate so that we actually, uh, we actually hit that target. Now, later model cars, the P2 cars that run ME7, so this is, starts actually as early as 99 and goes all the way up through about 2008, they actually have a boost pressure sensor, and that sensor, as it sounds like, actually senses the boost pressure. Uh, it's located either in the intercooler outlet for the uh, later model cars or in the actual tubing between the intercooler and throttle body on a little bit earlier model cars up to 02. Those sensors do have a high failure rate, and they are commonly a source of incorrect boost, so that's one thing you can look at. The HD TCV that IPD created was specifically to target factory TCVs that get a little lethargic and lazy. They just aren't quite precise enough, especially when you start raising the boost level beyond stock. You need something that's going to be precise and keep you within the limits of what that's going to be safe for that car and for that turbo. So we spent some time talking about turbochargers and the related parts today. And while this is by no means a comprehensive study of turbochargers, it should give you a basic understanding as to what a wastegate does, what the compressor bypass or blow-off valve does, how to adjust them, and what steps you need to take when you're upgrading your car from stock level to a tuned level.